Greetings everyone and welcome to LEGO Rewind, where we take another look at old retired LEGO themes, and today's retiree is one of the greats. I talked about this for a minute in the Insectoids episode, but felt it's meaty enough to have its own. Galaxy Squad is a LEGO space sub-theme released and concluded in 2013. It was a pretty typical medium size for space, with only a dozen sets spread over two waves to its name, including polybags. But there was a lot packed into these two waves, even more remarkable when you see its two lines in one, each side fleshed out enough to be their own complete sub-theme. And even then, they have smaller factions within the wider ones. On one end, you have the bugs, which are reminiscent of insectoids, but while those were clunky vehicles modified to look like giant bugs, these are natural enough to blur the lines. Some may be fully alive, but most are at least partly mechanized, with seats, control panels, and even missiles and blasters. So they could be the bodies of actual giant insects with their brains scooped out to make room for a pilot, or maybe it's a Pacific Rim thing with mostly fleshy monsters glued together. It's also a goofy Pluto thing, where you have normal-looking centaur-shaped mantises, but also human-shaped ones called mantazoids, along with mosquitoes and the termite-like bugoids, also a red variant, and these larvae that probably turn into a couple other things. It's a whole conglomerate of different species, with convoluted growth cycles involving multiple casts. These are some pretty wild builds, spread out with their stickly thin technic legs, huge heads, and sleek bodies. There's a lot of thought put into shaping, like the staggered mantis face simulating layers of folded up mandibles, or the compact, highly detailed space swarmers. They almost look like things you'd see in a tabletop RPG session. The colors are loud, contrast line with dark red and black, broken up a bit with mid-tones like tan or dark tan, but also balancing a wider range of trans colors than we usually see. We got trans red for the eyes, trans purple for the prisons and missiles, trans neon green for the wings, and trans pink for handguns, smaller eyes, and egg sacs. These colors could so easily overwhelm the senses, but they're neatly organized. The hive crawlers are marketed as the leader of the swarm, but... Nah, I don't buy it. This is just another cast that transports the larvae around. It's big, but not final boss big. The real queen's gotta be somewhere like in a planet made of bugs, protected by an endless brood. Some of the smaller ones were definitely made for army building. Like, you see those two ants in this set? In the background, there's a huge swarm of these breeds, along with super majors from another set mixed in. I like when sets go together, these painting a bigger picture of one colony, one super organism. You know those roaming ant armies that just wash over everything that moves? That's how I see these guys. Not evil, but so single-mindedly driven to expand and harvest the galaxy's meat. They're an existential threat, but you can't really be mad at them for following instinct. Earth just happens to be next on the menu. Well, I can't exactly move it out of the way. Who's going to protect Earth and the galaxy? The Galaxy Squad, of course, and boy. I like giant bugs. Like, I have a lot of giant bugs. But these are what I really gravitate towards. Speeders, tanks, mechs, battle buggies, jets, gunships, turrets, robot sidekicks. Galaxy Squad covers all the bases. Instead of one color scheme shared across everything that quickly blends together, these builds are separated into four subgroups, each with a different speciality. Green team is ground defense. Red team are speed demons. Orange team has the most firepower. <laughs> Just look at all this. And blue team, well... Canada does everything. Reconnaissance, interception, rescues, patrols, precision strikes, you name it. They have the most advanced tech, but probably don't excel at any one thing like the other teams do. They're just an all-around more versatile force, which you'd think wouldn't be compelling, master and none and all that, but they have the most presence out of all the teams, a joy to build and to look at. I get big Star Fox vibes, especially from the Swarm Interceptor. That's probably the best space fighter LEGO's ever designed. It has so many features crammed in that all work well. And the colors, the shape. I'm surprised it hasn't become iconic the way other LEGO spaceships have. People really slept on this theme. Having each team's signature color layered over the white ties them together as part of the same line. But the different toppings give Galaxy Squad this extra fire that some space themes just don't have. The only other time they tried something like this was Roboforce. Like the bugs, the squad just juggles loads of trans colors, but I actually like the screens being completely clear. Usually they'd be tinted that smoky black or orange or blue. But with so many other colors already here, there's just something clean and sophisticated about this. It's another element that unifies all the teams. The blue and orange teams are my favorites. With those yellow blasters and wacky angles, it feels the closest LEGO ever came in the new millennium to recapturing that classic space vibe before they actually did it with Benny's spaceship a year later. This aesthetic is top tier, it's like candy for me. 
I like how the logo splits, referencing the gimmick of the line. The builds breaking up to double your forces. LEGO vehicles being modular isn't unique to this line, it's not even unique to space, but Galaxy Squad takes it a step further. So often in other lines, when you remove chunks of a larger build, what's left looks skeletal or like a big box. It doesn't really work anymore, but these babies transform, which isn't unique to this line either, but only Galaxy Squad does both this well, combining modularity with transformations to clean things up, fill the gaps left behind, and make each part fully independent. I think some of these builds look better taken apart, but honestly, while the gimmick emphasizes going this way, I have more fun putting them together. It's like some tokusatsu combination sequence. I'm just expecting somebody to yell gatai. Not every vehicle splits, it's mainly the larger ones. When they try, the smaller ones can be mixed, but they're all very well designed, both aesthetically and structurally. The robot sidekicks are pretty special, with unique heads and armor and detailed gear giving each their own vibe. I could see each team's robots and vehicles being developed by different countries, though I'm not sure which would fit each team. I'll leave that up to you. The human minifigs have this gung-ho quality, with those gruff helmets, bright colors, and names like Ashley Starstrider, Chuck Stonebreaker, and Billy Starbeam. Sounds like a cowboy. And of course, there's Future Ultra Agent Solomon Blaze, who I've mentioned half a dozen times on this show. This man gets all the coolest toys. But I don't think I've ever pointed out this line's connection to Monster Fighters. LEGO used to connect a lot of their themes in ways that were kinda reaching, like the aliens from Alien Conquest teaming up with the Pharaoh from Pharaoh's Quest to collect the MacGuffins from Atlantis and open a portal to the past to bring dinosaurs to the modern world. I think I almost had a stroke saying that. In this case, Lord Vampire's ritual attracts the bugs that attack Earth in this theme, which is followed by Ultra Agents, for reasons. This makes Galaxy Squad the second part of one weird trilogy, but that's just how LEGO rolled. Anything goes. Nowadays, themes are mostly connected through Ninjago. It's like a nexus where they all get to meet up. Anyway, I don't usually go for pure combat space themes, but I think Galaxy Squad is my favorite example of that direction. The builds are so colorful and loud, but also sensible and technical, innovating in so many little ways, but still managing to keep some of that classic space feel. It's almost everything I love about LEGO Space. It's also the last of it. Starting in 1978, Classic Space enjoyed pretty consistent releases for over 20 years, ending that streak with Life on Mars for about six. Then it came back with Mars Mission, Space Police, Alien Conquest, Galaxy Squad in 2013, and that's it. There was no third era of LEGO Space. Now, why is that? What happened in the early to mid 2000s and mid to late 2010s. Lego and Star Wars oh right, Star Wars. We had the prequels in the 2000s, and since 2015 we've had an endless steady stream of new Star Wars content. Sequels, more prequels. Since they acquired the license, it's not like Lego wasn't releasing new Star Wars sets all the while when there weren't new movies coming out, but every time there's another Star Wars they have to make room for it. And while they had no trouble juggling their own space lines with ones like the Clone Wars in its heyday, there's like a dozen new shows lined up right now many of which will no doubt have at least a couple LEGO sets each. There's no wonder LEGO stopped releasing their own space sets, they just can't compete with this sheer volume of Star Wars stuff. And look, I like all of this. I like The Mandalorian, but do I need it all the time? Do I need Star Wars around the clock? No. It's interesting, looking back at classic space, you could say that was just LEGO Star Trek, something kids and parents looking for Star Trek toys could say was close enough. Space. The final frontier to boldly go where no child has gone before. You could also say that Adventures is just Lego Indiana Jones and Jurassic Park. Western was a love letter to Western films. A lot of Lego's non-licensed products were simply their version of licenses they have now. The next best thing. Even the Swarm Interceptor looks like a rebel ship. An M-Wing or W-Wing. Sometimes I really think that if LEGO could have obtained the license 20 years sooner and made Star Wars sets from the beginning instead of ever launching space, they probably would have. Now there's an April Fool's timeline I do not want to explore. Galaxy Squad was a cut above the rest. So many of these builds are bangers, out of control for 2013. They didn't have to play this hard. But looking at these, I get the impression the designers knew this could be their last chance to make a proper space theme, to get builds like these out of their system. Since then, we've seen some space adjacent sets, usually in LEGO City, more down to earth, and even those couple of new classic space builds from the LEGO movies. But they're chained to that gray, blue, and yellow look because that's all LEGO space is to some people. But to me, it's Ice Planet. 
It's Mtron, Blacktron, Futuron, Spiria, Space Police, Explorians, UFO, Insectoids, Life on Mars, Galaxy Squad, and many more. When I first glossed over this theme in the Insectoids episode, I was optimistic. It would only been a few years since space went dormant. Now? It's been almost a decade since Galaxy Squad ended, and the total absence of any worthy follow-up is really starting to sting. It feels like space might be gone for good, and I think that's a darn shame. Because I would love to see what the hands that created these could create today. Legos of all the losses 2013. They have finer tools to play with, and I can only wonder what a new space theme right now might look like. Just imagine. Maybe we'll get a Ninjago Starbound wave in a few years. <laughs> If you can find a few of these online for cheap, or even piece together some of the smaller ones, I'd definitely recommend it. Galaxy Squad is part of LEGO's history, and it's one of the best space themes ever as far as I'm concerned. I'm hoping other LEGO space nerds who slept on this one can learn to appreciate it as I have. That's it for today. If you enjoyed this content, I encourage you to check out the Planet Ripple logs. First two episodes are public now, and I'll be releasing new ones monthly. And between LEGO Rewind episodes, I'm going to start sharing my mocks and revamps in videos starting in May. If you want to support my work financially, my books are available on Amazon and itch.io. Just released Volume 6, and it's my favorite so far. And through Patreon, you'll see videos like this a week early, some behind-the-scenes action, and your name in the credits, all linked in the description. I got more on my plate than ever this year, so see you soon with whatever's next. Toodles! Space. The final frontier. These are the adventures of Legoland Space. Its unending mission to explore the depths of imagination, to seek out brave new worlds of excitement, to boldly go where no child has gone before. Each set sold separately.